This broadcast is brought to you by Usfina, the U.S. Soccer Federation News Association. Hello and welcome to the U.S. Soccer Federation News Association. I'm Chase Dingleheimer and today we have an exclusive interview with the Lincoln City Soccer Rims manager, Tom FM, ahead of their fixture in the FA Cup third round against Barry. Or is it Burry? Barbara, which one is it? She doesn't know either. Let's say hello to him. Tom FM, how you doing? Hi, Chase. I'm really well, thanks. Yeah, I'm just really glad to be on the show here with you. Okay, Tom. Well, let's start off with the biggest question then. Do you say Barry or Burry? <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure if it's all that important, but uh, I guess I say it. I guess it say Barry. Okay, great. Well, recently we've seen your side switch plays. They switched the 4-4-2 play from the 4-2-3-1 play. How do you feel about that? And where is your quarterback going to fit into these new plays? Um... Not sure I'll follow you on that, mate. What are you on about? Yeah, your QB. Where does he fit into these new plays? Yeah, Chase. Sorry about that, but I, th- I think you've got the wrong sport, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, right, okay. Uh, well, um, God. Um, okay, well, how, how do you feel about Tom Brady's chances in the Super Bowl this year? Look, Chase, I can't really be dealing with this kind of unprofessionalism. I'm here to run a football club. I'm here to talk about football, not whatever nonsense you're on about. I'm going to have to go, I think. Tom, buddy, I mean, I'm sorry. I can improve, I can improve. Um... Let me think here, let me think. What 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 are we going on mind here? Um the Columbus crew. How do we think about the Columbus crew? You know, we can we can save him, can't we save the crew? No look, Chase, I'm sorry. I'm look, I'm seriously, I'm I'm going now. Is he gone? What's that, Barb? You've got a letter for me? Let me see that. Dear Chase, you're not very good at your job. You know nothing about soccer. We wish we were sorry, but we're not. You're fired. Regards. Usfina CEO. I've just been... fired. And welcome back to the Lincoln Loco. Sorry about that little interview there. Chase wanted to do a bit of an interview with me. Um, I didn't realise it was going to be so awful. I'm sorry we had to put you through that. Um, luckily though, hopefully I don't have to do any more interviews with him like that because that would be nice. He wanted to do an interview because we just won our uh, FA Cup second round game against Barrow. And um, we were drawn against Berry in the in the third round. And he wanted, he wanted to do a little interview seeing if we could recreate history from last year uh, and go to the quarterfinals again. But the interview was just... Oh, God. Anyway, this is the bonus episode for the week. You guys absolutely smashed my likes target of 50 likes the, the, this past week. In fact, I think you hit it by Wednesday or something stupid like that anyway. So thank you very much for all those likes. Uh, next week, we'll do the same thing. Bonus episode if you get 60 likes though, uh, on all videos next week. We may include this one as well, I don't know, but uh, 60 likes is the target for next week. So make sure you get liking the videos. Since you were last here then, when we, uh, we played Leighton Orient, didn't we? Uh, or is that a lie? No, we played Leighton Orient and we played Crawley, didn't we? Uh, two wins there. We then played Notts County in the Czech Trade Trophy, drew 1 all. got very, very late goals there to uh, to get the goals in the game. Uh, we won on penalties, which meant we topped our group, so we won our group, which was nice. Uh, we then went away to Crew and lost 2-1. Wasn't great, they scored in the 93rd minute, so not the best. And in fact, I think when I was recording the first episode of this, uh, we were actually playing Crew in real life. Uh, and at the time I said, oh, we've gone 1-0 down. We're not going to win because we've got no strikers in real life. We ended up winning 4-1, so uh, maybe we need to say that more often. Maybe we need to say we're going to lose games more often in real life, and then we do end up winning 4-1. After that, though, we played top of the table Coventry and had a really, really poor game. No one played well at all. It was a rubbish, rubbish game, and we lost 2-0. And that sort of sparks something. These past few games here from Cambridge, in fact, probably more than that, to be fair. If you look from Everton and 23s down... Really, the form hasn't been great. We haven't been winning by a lot. So we changed formation. We changed from our 4-1-2-2-1, two, two, one, whatever it's called. Uh, we changed from that to a 4-4-2 against Colchester and came back with a 3... Uh, we came back with a 4-0 win. David Hendan scoring a hat-trick there, uh, doubling his gold tally for the season so far, which was great. We then played the same thing against Port Vale, won 5-2. That was a fantastic result. Matt, uh, Matt Green getting two goals there. I thought he got three, but Moss Bostwick got one. Uh, so yeah, Matt Green getting two of those goals. And then played Barry in the FA Cup, used that same formation, uh, and it was actually a little bit more tricky. Uh, it was 2-all, they equalised in the 87th minute, but then David Hernandez went and scored his second of the game in the 88th minute. So, 
Um, it's working out this tactic. It didn't work too well against Doncaster, but we did play well against Doncaster. Um, the form doesn't really show it. Han Habigan made a, a big mistake to leave for one of their goals. So it was a bit unlucky that game, but Doncaster are flying high in League One, so that's not too bad. Uh, after the FA Cup game, we were drawn against Berry uh, in the third round, who are just at the bottom of League One. They're like in the relegation zone of League One, so this is a game which is very winnable, in my opinion. They're only like a few players above us, technically speaking, if you look at the, the Football League as a whole. So that's kind of interesting, but today we've got Yeovil and Accrington to contend with. Two games which are very, very winnable for us, and uh, we need to pick up some points in these games, because we have dropped some uh, in the lead-up to these two episodes here. So if we look at the table as how it stands right now, uh, we're sitting fifth. Sitting pretty in fifth right now. We, we've dropped off a little bit, but we're on level points with Exeter, just behind on. Uh, ooh, must be kind of on goal scored or something like that. Could be level on goal difference. So it's goal scored that we're behind them on. Uh, Colchester is at two points ahead of us. Uh, Luton four points, uh, three points ahead of us rather. But um, Coventry are way ahead. Uh, they're on forty-four points, four points ahead of Luton. So it's looking tight. But Coventry are looking like the league title favourites right now. And I can't see them slowing down too much. Although they have lost two of the last five games. Um, but I think right now as it stands, we're currently five points clear of the playoffs. So I think as it stands, we're pretty safe for a playoff play, especially as we approach the halfway point of the season. Some things to update you on though. Uh, Rob Dickey is joining the club permanently. Uh, it turned out in his contract, on his loan contract, uh, if we look at this, uh, there was a, an optional fee of £25,000 to bring him in in January. So that's what we've done. His three-star current ability got that five-star potential. So why not bring him in? Uh, Raggett is currently meant to be leaving the club in January as well also because his loan contract ends but we have got a contract offer for him um, or a contract either way he's, they've said yes to getting him on to the rest of the year so that's good to see uh, so Sean Raggett may be joining us uh, for the rest of the season which is fantastic because he's a great player uh, we've used him all season and um, it will really help us out this year especially as it doesn't mean we have to do defensive issues at the back I've also got myself a new contract as well um, if we look at this contract info, it runs now until 20... What does it say? 2019. It was to the end of this season, but it's now to the end of next season. So uh, that's quite nice. I've got a nice uh, promotion wage rise if we get promoted, but uh, a huge relegation wage drop. So hopefully that doesn't happen because I don't want to drop um, to £600 a week. Right then, this is the lineup for the game against Yeovil today. Uh, we've got Vickers in goal as per usual. Forbes, Raggett, Waterfall and Long make that back line at the moment. The middle four then of Anderson and uh, Arnold on the wings. Whitehouse and Danny Rose in the middle. We're resting a few key players in the middle there. Woodyard needs a bit of a rest. Uh, Bostwick also needs a little bit of a rest. So they're resting in the middle there. And then Hanan and Green are up top for us today. Hopefully going to be bagging the goals in for us. Right then, kick off. We're playing in our black away strip today. Yeovil in the green. And uh, we immediately lost the ball. So that's a good start to the ball. Good start to the game, boys. Fantastic stuff there. And uh, we've now given away a foul. So even better start. Fantastic. As you can see, sitting in fifth, as, as we do, we'll just move down a little bit so you can sort of see the teams around us that we're going to be affecting this game. Uh, which actually just started looting, doesn't it? So potentially, if things went miraculously well, we could end up second in this game. Um, but we could drop down as far as seventh. So it's an interesting one, but White House on the ball, on the edge of the area now, uh, trying to beat his man, plays it out to Falls, who's in plenty of space. Hopefully he can whip across in. He puts a great ball in towards Arnold, but it's just cleared away. Only as far as Danny Rose, though. Danny Rose out to Anderson, Anderson out to White House. White House is shot. I'm sure it took a block there, but it didn't, obviously, because it's a goal kick. But very nice bit of play there from us, and uh, hopefully we keep it up all game. Yeovil now with a chance to attack. The ball played through to Omolona, who's uh, had a decent shot there, to be fair. And Rickers was forced to make a great save, otherwise that was sneaking at the far post. The corner comes in, it's cleared away, but hopefully that's that's the danger gone for us. But uh, that was that was a little nice counter-attack from Yeovil there, and it shows that they do have something in their locker to uh, to threaten us with. Yeovil, of course, being just just a weird side. They were in the Championship a few years ago, and then last year, um, was it last year or maybe the year before, they were really struggling to survive in the Football League. Like, it's been a bit of a... A huge bounce, really, if we're being honest. A massive bounce between what they have done and where they are at the moment. So, I mean, they're a decent side. Uh, they can be. Obviously, they're working in the championship at some point. But it's just a bit of a weird club, isn't it, really, when you look at the history of them. Uh, they've won back possession there, but given it straight back to Elliot Whitehouse, who's playing today as our sort of key man in the middle of the park there. Into Matt Green. Matt Green shot from the edge of the area just wide. Not really threatening the goal, I'm afraid. And we need to do better than that if we want to be showing ourselves as, as, as title contenders. Our oh, Surridge has been put forward now for, for Yeovil and Vickers, once again making a great save. That's why we've got him there. He's he's starting to improve now. He's starting to realise some of that potential. But I'm not. if we get promoted, I don't know if he's going to be realised that potential enough to be a League One quality goalkeeper. We have to get someone in over summer. Um, as we go forward, actually, and towards January, I think wingers is something that we need to look at. Uh, obviously, Dickey won't be on loan with us anymore. I'm going to get rid of Janelli. 
because I've never used him. So that sort of frees up a space for someone on loan. So I may be looking at a winger to bring up, come on loan. That may change things in our favour. I think that could be something that will really help us uh, push on in the second half of the season. Right, well, we're playing in the second half now. And really, we've not done that well if you look at the stats. Uh, we're behind in all the stats. And quite frankly, uh, that's not something that I want to be happy with. I want something to change here now. Um, Yeovil coming forward again now. Surridge on the ball. Plays it back to Bailey. Into Smith in the middle. who has got plenty of room to play it to Aloma. Aloma's shot has somehow gone on the back of the net. How I don't know how that went in. And I'm not happy with it at all. What just happened there? Well, our strikers have played absolutely abysmally. Uh, really, really shit, to be fair, if we've been honest here. So we're going to take... Um, Matt Reed off for Matt Green off for Matt Reed to come on. Jordan Maguire Drew is going to come on for Nathan Arnold, and hopefully that changes something. But we've just not played well at all this game. Uh, no one has really decided to, to step up to the mark. The ball's been cleared, and Matt Reed is never going to chase that down. That's rightly the end of the highlight there, I suppose, as we've just given the ball away cheaply there to Yoba, who are coming forward again. Surridge on the ball. Surridge hits the crossbar this time, and we've been saved there from going 2 0 down. Read out to Anderson though, he's got chance and got pace to burn down that right hand side. Cuts inside, gets fouled by his man. Send him off, ref. Send him off. Um, what was. The, oh, okay. I was very confused when the highlights stopped, but the highlights in. White House is there, heads it down to. Who did he head it down to? Matt Reed, and Matt Reed makes it 1 0. We need to start playing Matt Reed more if you're going to do that. Matt Reed with the goal there. We're back in this game now. We just need to start chipping away at them now. Chipping away. Uh, we've got another chance now as Anderson is on the ball, plays up. Towards Henan, but it's intercepted there. But Long makes another interception. His header was rubbish. Raggett wasn't there. Green is now on the ball for Yeovil. Green into Aloma. And it's 2-1 to them. I mean, after all this hype of saying how good that 4-4-2 has been in these past couple games that we've played. And uh, we've not seen the result here today, unfortunately. Ah. Oh, I can't believe this. We're actually going to lose to Yeovil, aren't we? Can't believe it. Well, the last ditch attempt now to, to salvage anything doesn't even come to fruition because we've lost 2-1. We've actually lost 2-1. Well, aggressively then. Not happy with that result. The players seem motivated by it, but... <sighs> Yeovil. How have we lost to bloody Yeovil? It's not all doom and gloom, though. We are still three points off automatic. But we are now two points uh, away from coming out of the playoff stages, which isn't good, because I want to stay in here all season. We need to keep this momentum going, so... We've got a game against Accrington in a few days' time now. This is where we have to, have to, have to really push ourselves now. Oh, Anton Rogers. This, this is interesting now. Anton Rogers is coming in to discuss personal matters. He wants to talk about his lack of football. Um, basically, let's ask Woodyard to resolve it. Oh, now, can you have a word with him and just say you need to earn it rather than complain about it? And of course he says no. Of course he does. I mean, why, why, Alec? Just why? Why don't you like me? What have I done wrong to you? I'm looking at you in the eye here. What have you done wrong? What have I done wrong? I'm going to say you get on well with Anton. Your input here will be appreciated. Um, and he says, I see what you're saying, but I'm not going to do it. See you later. Right. Well, let's discuss with Anton Rogers then. Uh, usually it works if it says, Alex Woodyard is playing too well for you at the moment. You need to capitalise if he slips up. Usually if you say that to a player... Um, then they're usually just like, yeah, that's fine. So let's use that. There we go. It makes sense. You're not judging me for no reason. You're not ignoring me for no reason. I work hard. There we go. Right, then we're going to stick with the 4-4-2 against Accrington there. there. We've made some changes. Woodyard and Bostwick come into the middle. Uh, Dickey on that right-hand side um, just because Sean Long's not been playing too well. And actually, can we play him more as a fullback? A fullback on support, perhaps? We'll try that with him. And um, Hanan... And uh, Matt Reed up front today. Obviously, Hanan's still there, but Matt Reed coming in today because Greeny didn't play very well at all last game and really did get a goal. So, there we go. That's what we're going to go for. We're at home to Accrington. We need these three points. Let's go and get them. Right, kickoff time. They're in the white. We're in the red. We're at home. We're playing in front of a bumper crowd here today. It's usually around the 7,000 mark at the moment. Um, in real life, we're actually getting close to sellout. I think next week, um, or maybe in two weeks' time, we're playing Coventry. In fact, it is this weekend we're playing Coventry. Um, so actually, as you're watching this, we would have already played Coventry, I think. Uh, but that's a sellout. I know that's a sellout. That sold out a few days ago, actually. So um, that would be a full 10,000 there for the Coventry game. Uh, Foot manager, not quite as, as good in terms of attendances. But around the 7,000 mark is, is fantastic, I think, anyway. So I'll take that anyway. 
Vickers' goal kick now. He pumps up the pitch towards Matt Reed, who flicks it on towards Harry Anderson, who's through. And Anderson has scored four minutes into this game. We're 1-0 up against Accrington. A fantastic start for us. We needed this start after that last game. Uh, as things stand, we've moved up to fourth position. And if Exeter slip up today, then we could be moving up to third if all things go our way. Clark has been put forward in towards Gobham, but Dickey is there to uh, to cover him and collect it. And now hopefully that, that's going to be enough, actually, as Matt Reed comes forward with the ball. Bostwick on the ball, uh, through to Anderson. Anderson uh, gets past his two men there. Bostwick into Matt Reed, and Matt Reed has doubled our lead to 2-0. And Matt Reed's two goals in two games now. This is the player who's a bit on fire at the moment. Perhaps we should be starting him more than the other two strikers that we'll be using. Oli Palmer's still never going to get a game. Um, I'm going to forget he's even at the club. I may even try and sell him in January. But, uh, but Matt Reed on the score sheet twice in two games now, so he's a player that you can start considering more and more now, I think. We've just lost our consistency in the past few weeks, and uh, if we get it back, as we could be doing today, you know, if we start today off as a clean slate, let's get the consistency back, as Luke Waterfall's header is just pushed off the line there by the goalkeeper. Uh, but if we get this consistency back, there's no reason why we can't back him up top three like we were towards the start of the season. It's a penalty. Um, I'm not really sure what it's a penalty for, but it is a penalty, so... I mean, I'm not complaining. Matt Reed steps up to take it, scores it. We're now 3 0 up. Matt Reed with three goals in two games now, his fifth of the season. Um, he's barely played, and yet he's already catching it with David Hernandez on like seven goals or nine goals or something like that. Like, it's something ridiculous. Matt Reed is definitely a player we can start using more and more and more. Arnold's corner now put into the area, only goes as far as Hernan, the clearance, puts it back towards Arnold. Arnold with a chance. He had so much chance to turn around and put it in the area there, but he just didn't, and his eventual cross was pretty rubbish. Uh, so, unfortunately for us, that's not great. But luckily for Accrington, uh, they've escaped conceding another goal there. And they're starting to put the ball forward now. Clark on the ball, through to Jackson, who's somehow got there, but he put it over the bar. It wasn't actually that far away, but uh, the danger is cleared. And now we can relax. Um, how things are going? Keep it up, lads. Matt Reed played insanely well this game. See, only eight starts, but yeah, he's got five goals this season. In fact, four starts. He's got more goals than he had starts. He's had four substitute appearances. We just need to start playing him more. Really, I think I'm going to have to stop doing it. Play him more. Which leads me to something as well, because there is a, a player on a free transfer who is of League One quality as a striker, which I've thought about bringing in, but he's a target man. And I never really used target men when we had a one-striker system. But... If we switch this 4-4-2 with two strikers and we use a target man like Matt Reed, perhaps he's going to be a viable option. So that's, it's something I'm thinking of, especially if he's League One quality, he'd be great to sign. But if Matt Reed is going to be backing in for fun anyway, then do we need him? Tough decisions here, but uh, Woodyard on the ball now. Loses it out, but it rolls out towards Arnold. Arnold to Woodyard, Woodyard to Bostwick, and Reed gets his hat-trick. It's now 4-0. Matt Reed with a phenomenal performance today. Three goals, one assist. He's absolutely run Accrington ragged. And I, I can't see why. I've got to be choosing him now. I've got to be selecting him for games now, surely. The more I look at this side now and the way they've played today, I can't see how this isn't my strongest eleven as it stands. I, I don't know how it's not. We're going to make some changes, though, because I'm not quite sure when our next game is. It could be midweek, which I don't want to leave these players too tired for. So Bosley has played well, but he's going to come off now for Elliot Whitehouse. Uh, Nathan Arnold as well played very well but I'm going to bring uh, Billy Knott on for him on that left hand side let's give him a little run out he needs to get his match sharpness up a little bit uh, we'll leave it like that for now but um, phenomenal performance from the boys I'm really happy with the way they played here today Fools throwing then out towards Woodyard who plays it back towards Knott not in the middle and Anderson is there to make it 5-0 what an absolute performance today what an absolute turnaround as well like we've just changed a few little players around and yet we've somehow been able to dominate Akronson here where we just couldn't do anything against Yeovil so perhaps the players we selected last game just weren't good enough, really. Perhaps that was what it was. But it doesn't matter because we're absolutely running them ragged here today and I'm delighted the way we've played. Uh, if we can get some more goals as well, that'd be great because it'd be great for the goal difference. Uh, the ball's been put forward to Hernan who can't quite get there, but um, the ball is played back out towards Accrington. Actually, they won it back, actually, to be fair to them. Uh, they've kept possession here. Clark's been put forward and he's nearly put it round Vickers who hasn't done it. He's, uh, he's made the save there because that's a fantastic little... A uh, bit of play from Vickers to to not let the player go round him because I reckon if that was Farman that he would have gone round him because Farman not quite as good as commanding of his area as Vickers is uh, in game and in real life so that's why I think I prefer Vickers at the moment because he just commands his area a lot better than Farman right 15 seconds left on the clock then there's no way Accrington are going to get a goal now or get back in this game at all Vickers collects the ball Hold on to it, mate. Just just take your time to clear it up the pitch. It's been cleared there, and the referee blows for full time. Lincoln City 5, 
Accrington Stanley nil. What a performance. Matt Reed, you are my new hero today. I mean, I love him anyway in real life, but in-game, he's never impressed me until today. What a performance from him. And there we go then. We're still sitting in sixth. Other teams around us ended up winning their games in the end. But the goal difference is phenomenal. I mean, look how far we're ahead of, of Cheltenham. Uh, we're ahead of Colchester. In fact, we're ahead of everyone apart from Mansfield. So as long as Mansfield drops some points in the next few games and lose the goals and lose the goal difference, then we are one of the, the best lethal sides in the league, which is fantastic to see. Next episode then is going to be a three-game special. We're going to play Berry next game, and then, of course, we've got the two local games against Mansfield and Notts County that we can't miss. We can't not show you them because they're huge games. So uh, those three, all next episode. I can't wait for it. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>